In this video, I'm going to be going over the Langchain expression language. I'm going to show you some demos in Node.js, and then I'm going to hop through and also show you how you can debug it and see what's going on within Langsmith. So just to touch on Langsmith for a moment. So Langsmith is a new way that you can get a deeper dive and a better look on what's going on behind the scenes when you're making an application that involves an LLM. So this is sort of a high level view of a project that I've implemented and the project's actually going to be what I've run through in, in the examples in just a couple minutes here. But this gives you an idea on how many tokens are used, how long that chain took to run, and then you can actually go in and see all of the different inputs and outputs and the chain that's actually being ran through each time. So it's a really nice implementation because you can have all your projects here. You can see all the tokens here. So if cost is a consideration and all of that, um, and you, you know, of course the latency and all of that, you know, if you want to keep an eye on that, this gives you a really good way to observe all of that and a good reason for that sake to actually use Langchain. So the thing with the Langchain expression language is it's really a response in to a lot of people's criticism, I think, in terms of Langchain with uh, some people's difficulty with not being able to do what they want to potentially do as quick as they potentially want. And the thing with the Langchain expression language is I think it really aims to simplify how Langchain is used going forward. So I think this is a new direction and I think it's likely safe to say that just learning alone these three methods as well as this sort of general uh, portion of their documentation is likely going to be a good place to start because it seems like this is going to be the standard going forward at least for some time. Now one thing to note is because this is all so new, uh, dealing with LLMs and all of the different functions that people are, are coming up with and uh, use cases and all the different implementations all sort of coming together within this framework, you just sort of have to take it, uh, you know, with uh, in stride that there are going to be some breaking changes and, and whatnot, and you're going to have to sort of adapt as things go. So this is... Um just going to be a short video where I'm just going to be going through mainly these methods and then show you how you can also uh, implement the runnable sequence array. So if I hop within my VS Code here, so I just set this up um, pretty simply. I have my .env with an OpenAI API key, so I'm just using OpenAI in this example. Uh, I'm also using three examples directly from their documentation. So you can go ahead and reach for these. I'll set up a repo for this just quick if you want to have them all ready and just run through them. You can do that. And then the other thing to note is just make sure that you both install uh, .env uh, lang chain and then set your package to type module in this. So the first one I'm going to run is simply the invoke method. So this simply adds the invoke method on the chain. And in this one, all that we're doing is we're simply using a prompt template with a topic. So we're passing in the topic into our prompt template here. And I'll run this. And then as soon as it's Ran. I'm going to hop back to Langsmith and just give you a glance here. So you can see right at the top here, this was the last thing that ran. And you can see the joke here. Why did the YouTube become the gardener? Because they wanted to have a channel with a lot of subscribers. So obviously a terrible joke, but just to sort of give you an idea on how if you implement these things in tandem, how useful they can really be, right? Because the one thing with building out an LLM application, what I've found up until the point of using Langsmith is unless you're writing these things to either a database or locally, all of the different outputs, you don't really have an idea of how many tokens are being used, uh, a, a log of all the different errors, and all, there's a whole host of reasons on why you want to implement something like Langsmith. And really it's like it's uh, its own thing right now. I don't think there's any competitor so I encourage you, if you have access to Langsmith, to just include it within your project. So just to touch on that for a moment, to include this within your project, it's as simply as creating a new project like this. You can click whether you're using Python or TypeScript, install Langchain like you typically would, and then all you have to do is simply paste this within your terminal, 
and replace your API key. And then you're good to go. And it's just going to track all of that, uh, uh, all those Langchain uh, functions that you're, you're running. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the batch method. Now, the batch method is nice because from what I understand, it will also batch different queries to APIs like OpenAI if the API supports it. So what do I mean by that? So say if you uh, have uh, um, two different queries for an LLM and instead of making multiple API calls, you just want to make one, batch is a way that you can do this. So under the scenes, there's some efficiency there from what I understand. So I'll just demonstrate this. And then I'll hop, hop back to Lang, Lang Smith rather and just show you. Okay, so if we go back. Okay, so same thing here. And the one thing to note is I did have an error earlier, which is sort of nice to see. So just to show you what an error does look like if you don't implement something correctly, you can see that you get the status code and you can sort of debug from there. Okay, so next I'm gonna be showing you stream. So stream is a great method. You know, I think a lot of use cases when people think about this, obviously chat GPT comes to mind or just chatbots in general. And being able to stream responses is something that I think is a very common use case. So being able to uh, pipe and stream out these responses in chunks is something that's gonna be super useful and it will be nice to have it standardized across the different chains that you want to use. So I'll just sort of demonstrate how it can actually stream the output to the console here. And you see, so it sort of looks broken within the console, but then again, if I hop back to Langsmith and I take a look again, you can see the response right there. Okay, so the last one is one, so I just wanted to touch on this because it's all very new, but it's the runnable sequence. So you can see the array, so we have a prompt template, we have the model that we wanna use, and then we also have the output parser. So just to also demonstrate this within Langsmith, if I just run this, and I'll hop right back to Langsmith. Then we see it comes up here and you can see it broken down here. So we have our prompt template, we have our output parser. So you can see how this starts to become really useful where all of a sudden that mystery or sort of black box feel when you're building an, uh, a Langchain application all of a sudden starts to come to life with something like Langsmith. So I can say that I'm definitely going to be using this for all my Langchain projects going forward. So any videos on this channel, I'll be including this and just helping you try to see what's going on behind the scenes. You know, one of the basic basic but most common questions I get is when I demonstrate a project is how much does it cost? So this will be a really useful way to show you when I build something like maybe with GPT-4 and it's doing something complicated in the background, this will show you exactly how much it costs. So super handy, you know, being able to answer your questions alone, you know, just small things like that. And eventually I plan to do a deeper dive on Langsmith itself as I dig into it a bit further. So that's pretty much it. I encourage you, the resources to look at are within guides under the Langchain expression um, on their uh, both JS or Python implementation. There's both of them right now. So just take a look at both the interface and cookbook, run through some examples. I'll also put a repo where you can reach for this if you just want to quickly run through these models. And then, yeah, if you have access to Langsmith, I really encourage you to try to use it. It's an awesome uh, implementation to pair alongside with your Langchain project. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.